Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning, good afternoon. I hope you're staying warm wherever you are. Um, I'm so excited to be present, uh, not presenting, sorry, to present to you today <laughs> um, our great webinar on Oracle Apex new features. My name is Monica Lee and I'm the marketing director for Viscosity. We are a full Oracle stat consulting firm with core expertise in Oracle database, including Rack, Oracle Apex, zero downtime migrations, performance tuning, high availability. Um, we also have decades of experience with infrastructure, including engineered systems. And we've got several um, Oracle Database 19C workshops going on with user group OD Tug, And it's one workshop a month leading up to their annual conference, Case Scope, which is coming up um, all virtual. So our first workshop was last month and we've got five more workshops for you, so stay tuned. Um, during today's presentation, feel free to submit questions to our presenter, Mark, in the questions or chat, chat prompt that you should see in the lower right side of GoToWebinar. Um, he'll get to them as soon as he can following his presentation, so no worries, but definitely put your questions in as they come up to you. And um, today we've got Coleman from NYOUG. He's going to present a little bit about NYOUG to you. If you've not um, gotten familiar with them, visit them at nyoug.org. And I'm going to hand it over to you, Coleman. Thank you, Monica, for the kind introduction. Greetings, everybody. Welcome to our series of webinars with um, co-hosting with uh, Viscosity and NYOUG. Uh, just a little bit about NYOUG. It was formed in 1984 for the exchange of ideas and support among Oracle software products. The next slide. Oops, sorry. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> and you can connect with us on Twitter, Meetup, LinkedIn, Facebook, and of course our website, nyoug.org. And reach out to our members at the Oracle Community Board at Community User Groups. Org, uh, user Groups. And thank you, Viscosity, uh, for uh, co hosting these series of webinars with us. And I just want to introduce Mark Suits. He's a director of software development for Oracle Application Express and Oracle's database tools division. He's responsible for managing the development and delivery of Apex, Oracle's premier low code development platform. Mark has been in Oracle since 1998. After working for Oracle Consulting in Germany and the US for a number of years, he joined the Apex development team in 2002. Mark lives in New York City with his family and holds a master's degree in computer science from the University of Applied Sciences in Wedel, Germany. And thank you again, Mark, for uh, presenting today. And thank you, Viscosity. And I'll turn it over to Mark. All right, uh, thank you, Coleman, and thank you, Monica. Sharing my screen one second. Yeah, I hope you can all see my screen now. Looks great. All right, awesome. Well, let's get started. Uh, so again, yeah, my name is Mark Seifts, uh, Director of Software Development for Apex. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the new features we introduced uh, last year in 2020, Apex 20.1 and Apex 20.2. I'm going to start out though with a brief uh, overview of what Apex actually is. If any one of you is new to Apex, I'm going to give you a very quick rundown. Then I'm going to do some general updates on uh, what's new with Apex uh, and uh, the community, and then get into the feature updates. And then hopefully at the end, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview of what we are working on for our next release, Apex 21.1. All right. So if you want to connect with me on Twitter or LinkedIn, uh, you'll find my information here. And I'll be sharing my slides with the NYUJ so you'll be able to uh, get all these links later on. I put some links later on in Slack also, oh, and, and in chat here. So, uh, say power statement, uh, I'm gonna mostly talk about what's already available, uh, but uh, I do plan to touch a little bit on 21.1, so don't make any purchasing decision based on that just yet. All right, so if you're new to Apex, if you haven't heard about Apex before, uh, Apex is a low-code development platform. And you use Apex to develop uh, web-based applications, scalable, secure enterprise apps uh, that you can run and deploy anywhere in the world. 
Now, when we talk about low code, uh, that's a term that was coined by Forrester a couple of years ago, and it refers to uh, tools that are declarative. Uh, you uh, basically describe what your application is supposed to be doing rather than writing a lot of code. So it's much easier to get started, uh, low barrier of entry. Uh, low code tools provide a lot of uh, rich functionality, reports, charts, uh, pre built components. Uh, and that enables you to uh, focus and concentrate on your actual business requirements. You don't need to uh, worry too much about your infrastructure or your stack or your uh, coding lots and lots of lines of codes. Uh, uh, so you'll be uh, much quicker. Uh, you'll be able to release your apps much faster and uh, it'll typically cost you a lot less. Now, Apex uh, is uh, a low code, one of these low code uh, tools. Uh, customers use Apex to build and uh, manage their applications typically on top of uh, Oracle apps, Oracle uh, databases, uh, or also reaching out more recently to uh, REST APIs and external data sources. Uh, Apex is a tool that is built into the Oracle database. So wherever you run the Oracle database, uh, you can have uh, Apex, be it on premises, on the cloud, on your laptop, anywhere really. And uh, since it's built into the database, uh, a lot of your Oracle database skills uh, come in handy. If you know SQL, if you know pure SQL, that's what they use to develop many of our reports and, and, and charts and, and uh, business logic. And of course, if you know some JavaScript, uh, you can also make use of that uh, for client-side extensions. Typical use cases for Apex, starting out with uh, very easy spreadsheet replacements. You have like all these Numerous spreadsheets floating around in your corporations, uh, emailing them around is very effective. So with Apex, you can take these spreadsheets and uh, move them to the web. Uh, opportunistic applications that the kind of application that uh, everybody always needs, but no one ever gets to actually writing. So the idea is with Apex, you can go to either our cloud services or to your own Apex instances and quickly build these kind of apps. Uh, for your day-to-day -day, uh, business needs. And you can do that uh, as like a business user, a citizen developer, and you don't necessarily have to be a professional programmer. A lot of our customers use Apex to migrate their Oracle Forms applications to the web. Uh, there are a lot of similarities and that you use uh, SQL and PSQL SQL and the declarative way of programming uh, that makes uh, Apex a natural choice for uh, Forms customers. Uh, we run Apex as a service internally. So we have like an internally hosted instance uh, where we have uh, 5,000 different teams, groups inside Oracle and 18,000 active developers building out their Apex apps. And uh, you can kind of follow the same model. You can roll it out in your own companies or you can sign up for our cloud services and then uh, really use Apex uh, as a development service online rather than having it uh, running on your machines. External data sharing is interesting because a lot of uh, customers that we uh, work with, uh, they may not be large corporations, they may not have the infrastructure to actually kind of open up the networks to their partners and their, and their customers. So with uh, Apex and the cloud, you can very easily uh, share your data, share your applications out uh, to, uh, to the public. And then SaaS uh, and e-business suite extensions, also very popular. Uh, building extensions to the Oracle eBusiness Suite, building extensions to uh, Oracle Fusion applications uh, using Apex. All right, architecture. Apex is built into the Oracle database. So it, when you install an Oracle database, if you're DBA, you install the Oracle database, then you install Oracle Apex. You'll find Oracle Apex as a schema inside uh, your database, with a lot of PL SQL and, and, and uh, SQL code inside and a metadata repository that holds your application definitions. Then there's Oracle REST data service in the middle here. And Oracle REST data service in this scenario only serves up uh, your JavaScript, your images, your style sheets, and kind of passes through your requests from your web browser to Apex and back. Unlike other uh, frameworks uh, that are typically very middle tier centric that run a lot of logic in the middle tier, Apex is doing all of this inside the database. So uh, all the business logic, all the page rendering, all of this happens inside the database, very close to your data. So I guess one of the biggest advantages of this architecture is uh, you have zero latency between your uh, business logic and your underlying data. 
Apex has been around for a long time. Uh, I started out in 2002. We first released Apex in 2004. And around that time, we also launched apexorg.com, or at that time it was htmldb.org.com. Uh, but that service has been around uh, for 15, 16 years now. And uh, I'm not going to go through all the milestones here, but uh, what I do want to highlight, applications that you built uh, 15, 16 years ago or 10 years ago or whenever, they still run on that instance, right? ApexOracle.com, we've upgraded it many, many times, but your applications, uh, you put them there uh, 10, 12, 15 years ago, they still run. And because they are metadata driven, uh, they are always kind of uh, generated on the fly, so you don't really have to go in and, and uh, reprogram everything for a new version of Apex. You always have to make some adjustments, update your theme, uh, update some components, but by and large, the applications uh, that you put there uh, are still running, and you can do the same in your own enterprises to uh, build applications and uh, then work with Apex to uh, keep them running over many generations of Apex. Right, so if you want to get started with Apex, uh, there's a link up here, apexorca.com. Getting started, I'll just put this here in uh, chat. Well, I guess I can't put it in chat, so I can. One second. There it is. That's the coming. I shouldn't try that. One more try. All right, doesn't come across. Copy. There you go. So I put the link in chat. This is if you want to see how you can get started with Apex. And uh, as I mentioned, there are many options. You can uh, do it uh, right here in the middle on premise. You can install the free Oracle database on your laptops. You can install the full enterprise edition in your company. Uh, you can stand up an Oracle Accelerator machine and you can run Apex there. Now, uh, more recently, uh, lots of uh, Apex use happens on the cloud. Uh, we've been running apexoracle.com again since 2004, but uh, since like, I don't know, two years, three years ago, uh, we now have the Autonomous Database uh, with two different flavors, ATP for transaction processing and ADW for data warehousing workloads, where you can uh, run Apex. We also have a dedicated uh, Autonomous Database service, and uh, earlier this year, we launched the Apex Application Development Service, which is a... Uh, development service that's uh, just Apex. You can also run uh, Apex uh, on database cloud service, DBCS. So the advantage of running Apex on any of these services, of course, are you don't have to worry about your hardware and your infrastructure. Oracle is taking care of that for you. And if you're running it on autonomous, uh, we also take care of managing your service, uh, managing your underlying database and uh, configuring ports and, and the middle tier and your firewall and everything uh, else for you. And there's a free tier. So when you sign up for autonomous database serverless, uh, you get like the first months, uh, uh, you get like a certain cloud credit. But even beyond the first month, uh, there are a number of services that are available to you uh, for free. So you get like an Apex service, you get two compute services. Uh, uh, so there are a number of uh, services that are part of the free tier uh, that you can run uh, for free indefinitely as long as you use them. And of course, you can also run uh, Apex anywhere else where an Oracle database runs. Uh, so if you prefer a third-party cloud or your own uh, hosting service, uh, you can certainly set up Apex there as well. Anywhere where you can run an Oracle database, you can uh, configure and run Apex. All right, so if you want to learn more about Apex, uh, apexoracle.com. Uh, we have getting started guides there, more information on the architecture, use cases, lots of success stories and tutorials and uh, videos all right so with that uh, brief intro i do want to start with a demonstration and then uh, get into a specific feature updates and uh, given that we are here in new york and by uh, i wanted to kind of start out with uh, new york city related data uh, 311 data if you have any service issues if your cars kind of snowed in or whatnot uh, you can call uh, 311 and all your service requests are stored in uh, through a database and they're available through uh, New York City's open data. And that looks like this. That's the website that talks about this API. And the reason I'm starting out with this, besides this being kind of a local example, is that Apex uh, is really good at uh, making it easy for you to build 
reports and charts and, and visualizations on uh, those kind of data sources. So when you look at this, it kind of describes what the data set is about. You see like a description of all the columns, and then you can uh, look at the actual uh, data, right? There's like noise complaints and illegal parking and more noise and, and block driveways and whatnot. And then you can get the address and uh, time and when it happened and whether it's been resolved or not. So you can look at the data here online, or you can grab the API. And an API looks like this, right? That's the API endpoint. I'm just going to copy it. When you look at it in the web browser, it kind of looks a little bit uh, cryptic. It's going to be a JSON document, uh, not much to uh, easily read through. Well, it's going to take some time. So I'm going to jump into Apex. So while that is loading, I'm going to get back to that. So this is Apex, and I do have a local instance of Apex running here. I created an NYOEG workspace that I'm going to log into. And I'm going to go to uh, the application builder. The application builder is what you use to uh, develop apps. SQL Workshop is what you use to kind of look at your data, look at your tables, create and edit your SQL code. Team development is to kind of track your uh, projects. And in the gallery, you find lots of sample code, sample applications, and uh, packaged applications. So going to the builder, going to start a new application with the create application wizard. I'm going to call this NYOUG demo. And now I have like lots of options. I can add all kinds of pages and forms and charts and such. I can add these kind of features to it. But I just want to start out with one empty application, one blank home page. Uh, that's it. So I'm going to create this. So what happened now is that Apex generated this application as metadata inside uh, the database, inside my Apex schema. So when I run an application, Apex is reading that metadata, this description of my app, and it's building out these uh, screens for me. So that's what an empty Apex app looks like. There's a menu here on the top. There's a logo, and there's a, like a breadcrumb, but nothing much else, right? It's an empty page, and I can now start building out uh, content. So this is still loading. That's not good. So going back to Apex, going to uh, shared components. And uh, shared components is, well, I guess, functionality that's shared across multiple pages. And what I'm interested in here right now is uh, data sources. Typically or historically, you would build Apex apps on local data, data stored in your database. But I want to kind of play with this uh, 301 data, which looks like this. That's still not there. And uh, so I need to create a REST data source as the source for this. I'm going to hit Create. I'm going to out, start out from scratch. I'm going to call this New York City 311. I'm just going to put this endpoint in here. I'm going to hit Next. So now it's going to take a look at that data, and it's going to hopefully provide me here with a preview in a moment. OK. So I'm going to create a new remote server. This is just like the base URL and the service path that is important for me if I want to later on deploy it to a different instance. I don't need authentication for this particular service because it's like all wide open. Most REST APIs that you're connecting to, they typically require authentication where you would uh, use things like uh, basic OSP, OS2, OCI authentication, HTTP header, or URL query strings. Again, I don't have authentication, so let's discover the data in here. Let's hope that that goes a little bit quicker than the other example over here. Well, this is what it looks like. Like this is a JSON document, so you get like the created date and the agency name and the type of complaint and, and where it happened and uh, a location and whether it's been resolved or not. So you get all this information uh, as a JSON document, and Apex happens to understand JSON, uh, so it maps it to something that you can use in Apex. So that's what it looks like. That looks nice. So I'm going to create this REST data source now. And now I have this. And by creating this new data source, it is now available to me to all my other wizards. So when I go to uh, back to the builder, and when I create a new page, let's do a report. Interactive report. I'm going to call this NYC 311. 
I'm going to add a breadcrumb to it. And then I'm going to add it to my navigation menu. And now on this page, you choose what your data source is for this report. It can be a local da database, it can be a local table or SQL query. It could be REST enabled SQL, that is something that you use to connect to other external or, or remote Oracle databases. Or it could be a REST data source, which is what I just created. So let's pick that. And then I don't really want to see all this uh, information, right? I do want to know what the agency is. I do want to know the status. The borrow is certainly interesting. I want to see a descriptor of the incident, uh, the agency name. Uh, then let's take the street name and the created date and the complaint type. That's important. The location type, maybe. All right, I think that should be enough. Let's create. And now I have an interactive report page. And when I run this, hopefully I see some data. Bear with me just a moment. There you go. So there's my data. And uh, again, there's my agency, the status of borrow descriptor. So I can make some adjustments now. I can say move the borrow to the beginning and then maybe the complaint type right next to it. And the agency and agency name, status descriptor, suite name, that's all good. Location type. All right, let's see how that looks like. One moment. Okay, so that looks nice. So now I can uh, start looking through the data. I can do some analysis. Uh, I can do some charts. But the whole thing uh, is a little bit slow, right? Like uh, for every request, I need to kind of go out to this New York City open data web server and kind of pull the data back in. And if I want to do quickly uh, some analysis on this data, I would rather have it cached locally. And uh, prior to APEX 20.2, uh, you were already able to just uh, cache large data sets, uh, but they would be cached if you couldn't really uh, look at the data uh, directly. So what we've done in uh, Apex 20.2 is we added a option to your REST data source, which allows you to map this REST API to a local table. So when you edit this REST data source, you can click on Manage Synchronization, and then you uh, define a new synchronization, and you give that table a name, and write the three on one. And then you save this. And the next step, uh, you're going to actually create this table. And this is what uh, Apex suggests you do, right? It kind of creates this table based on the REST API. Looks good to me. So I'm just going to hit Create Table. And now I can actually synchronize this data on a regular basis. I can do an append, merge, replace, and I can set up a schedule uh, to do this on a regular basis. So if I talk to some REST API that gets updated every hour, I would probably hit hourly. I know this is 311 data gets updated once a day, so I would pick daily because there isn't really any need for me to reach out to this API more frequently than that API actually getting updated. But uh, let's just save and run this for now. So now I saved the synchronization, a new table got created for me, and APEC is automatically uh, synchronizing that data now with this REST API while this is running over here. And again, if I had set up a regular schedule, this would now happen every day, every night. Uh, I would just pull in the latest uh, 3 one data and merge it into uh, my existing data. I can go to SQL Workshop, go to Object Browser, and there's that new table, right? Uh, there's a new table with all these columns. I can look at uh, the SQL statement that was used to actually create uh, this table. And then I can look at the data, and I see that there's already some data loaded in. So this is great. Now I should be able to make this page much faster. Uh, the way for you to actually tap into that uh, localized data is you edit your page. As a developer, you kind of switch back to the developer view. And then you edit your uh, region, your interactive report. And over here, you turn on the use synchronization table to on. Save this. When I get back here, it's now a lot quicker, right? 
you'll see how it kind of instantly loads. I can very easily go in now and create some charts. Let's say I want to see which borough has the most complaints, uh, number of complaints. There you go, Manhattan, Brooklyn has the most, I guess, followed by the Bronx. State Island, of course, uh, only a few. And what you're seeing here is like the last thousand rows, right? I could extend it now to kind of go back for years, uh, but uh, for testing while I'm developing this, I'm only pulling in like a uh, thousand rows. I can also look at uh, what's most commonly complained about, right? Like what's the complaint type? And then you'll see that noise is by far the most common complaint followed by illegal parking, blocked driveways, uh, heat and hot water complaints. All right, so that's all pretty cool. I can now do some analysis of my data. I can resort and reshuffle the data here. I can create a break column reports, uh, kind of having everything sorted by borough. I can uh, apply some filters, right? I can uh, do like formatting, highlighting, and every time uh, I guess a borough equals uh, Brooklyn, I want to highlight this in red. So I take out the break columns again. Uh, I'm highlighting all the Brooklyn uh, incidents. And if I like what I see, well, if I want to kind of export that to Excel or to PDF, I can go and make use of some of our new export options. Bring this into Excel actually creates a native Excel file. So when I look at this and open it up in Excel, There you go. It looks just like what you've seen on the web page, including formatting, and it has like all these drop downs here that I can use for filtering. So if I want to just look at, I don't know, uh, look at clubs, bars, and restaurants, I can filter that down over here as well. I can also do this with PDF. So we have a new native PDF engine built into Apex. So no more configuring of like orts or FOP or anything, it's all built in Apex. Uh, it's all available out of the box. Download this to PDF. And there we go. And now I have a nicely formatted uh, PDF file that has also all the formatting in here. All right, so that's my little intro just, uh, introduction into what development with Apex looks like, how you interface with uh, REST APIs. I also highlighted a few of the new features in Apex uh, 20.2. But let me go back to my slides now for a little bit. I do want to do a few more general updates on Apex and then uh, talk about some of the new features. So I want to highlight our Apex office hours. Apex office hours have been around uh, for, I think, two or three years now. We do this uh, once a month, once every few months, and uh, we have uh, members of the team, development team, external partners, anyone uh, talk about uh, new things in Apex. And there's one coming up uh, the Thursday, actually, where four of our partners are going to talk about real-world local development with Apex. So highly recommend it. Recommend it. You can just go to this link here. And uh, it's free. You just uh, join when it's on. And uh, we also have like, oh, oops, that's not it, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we have also have all the recordings of past uh, office hours. So apexorca.com slash office hours gets you there as well. I'm going to put this into chat. And uh, they can look at all these uh, office hours and watch recordings of past office hours. And uh, if you want to see more about 20.2, or if you're interested in uh, printing and what change with printing, I included two links here uh, that are uh, very interesting uh, for those kind of topics. If you're already using Apex, uh, you probably know that we uh, release Apex now twice a year. One uh, release in the spring, one in the fall. Apex 20.2 was our last release in October. Uh, and uh, following a release of Apex, there are always going to be uh, some bugs found. So what we started doing are these uh, patch that bundles. So if you want to get uh, the latest set of bug fixes, you can always go to this page over here uh, or just go to uh, apexorca.com slash download, which I'm also going to put in Slack uh, chat. And you can uh, go and read up on the, download, uh, on the PSE bundle here 
and then go to the known issues page and uh, read uh, about the bugs that we fixed. So they release uh, every month, every week, uh, depending on what bug fixes came out. So if you want to get the latest version of the PSE bundle, you can download them uh, from Oracle Support and you get information on uh, this uh, OTN page. Documentation refresh. Uh, we uh, have our Apex documentation at apexoracle.com slash doc. 202. Also putting this in chat. Oops, sorry. Apexoracle.com doc202. That's better. <laughs> All right. And uh, I do want to highlight uh, a few deprecated and desupported features if you've been using Apex for a while. Uh, starting with Apex 21.1, we will no longer include the productivity and sample apps with Apex. We're actually moving them to GitHub. It allows us to keep them up to date on a more frequent basis, and you can just download them and install them from there. We are removing the old application migration workbench, which is a tool that we had years ago that uh, enabled you to track your forms migration projects, but uh, yeah, it uh, didn't really generate apps for you. So it was really more project management applications, so uh, there wasn't that much value in it anymore. So we're removing that. We're also deprecating web sheets, and we're deprecating any charts, any maps, any Gantt. Those are our old uh, charting engines, which we've replaced a number of releases ago with Oracle Jet. Uh, up until now, you had them kind of running side by side, uh, but now they're going to be uh, deprecated, and it's only going to be Oracle Jet. Also, if you're running Apex on premise, uh, you should be using the Oracle REST data services now. Our old HTTP server, Modbio SQL, and the embedded gateway, they're going away. Also, if you're still using IE11, that's also no longer supported. And with each release, we are updating our JavaScript libraries. I want to highlight that because it's kind of like an important uh, step that we do in our release cycle. We always uh, get the latest version of all these open source libraries, including OrcaJet but also third-party libraries like jQuery, CK Editor, Monaco, and such. We upgrade them to their latest releases uh, and uh, test everything in Apex to make sure it's working with these releases. And it's important because a lot of open source libraries uh, will have some CVEs filed against them at some point in their life, right? Like every open source library will have some security vulnerability filed uh, against some older version at some point. So you always want to make sure that you stay on the latest versions on, of these libraries. Uh, otherwise, you may uh, run insecure code. So it's not an Apex-specific thing. If you're building React applications, you're building Oracle Jet applications, you're building any kind of web application, if you're including open source libraries, always make sure you keep them up to date. And with Apex, you have the benefit uh, of us doing that work for you. We are upgrading these uh, libraries with each major release of Apex. And if need be, uh, we also do this as part of our PSAs. Like last year, we had to upgrade jQuery, uh, and we uh, made available a new version uh, of uh, that library that was tested with Apex. I mentioned we are moving our Apex package apps to GitHub. So this is the link to uh, GitHub where you can uh, actually uh, see and download them. So far, we only have a little bit of sample code there. But once Apex 21.1 comes out, uh, you'll find a lot more uh, code on this URL. And then I want to uh, make some uh, announcement here for uh, our hiring activities. Uh, we've been hiring a lot of uh, new team members over the last uh, year or so. Uh, Apex uh, got involved with uh, Oracle's uh, pandemic response uh, to a large extent. Uh, we built out a lot of uh, applications uh, for the US government to help uh, with the uh, virus testing and distribution. And uh, based on that, uh, we started increasing our team size and we are still looking. So if you're interested in working for the Apex team, uh, you can go to Oracle.com corporate careers, uh, put in these codes. Uh, we're looking for Apex product managers as well as JavaScript developers for Apex. So if you are interested in these, take a look at these uh, job requisitions and uh, also uh, email me if you're interested. I'm going to try to put this into chat. There you go. So there are the codes. Uh, just 
plug them into this URL here, and then you can look up these requisitions. All right. So with that, uh, let's take a look at uh, some of the new things in Apex 20.2. <laughs> I'm going to run through this list. I want to start out with uh, Redwood UI. Uh, you probably heard or have seen Redwood. That's something that Oracle's been doing now for about two years, uh, changing our corporate UI, our websites, our marketing materials, our whole theme at conferences like Open World uh, to this Redwood look. And a lot of our products and cloud services, they also use this uh, UI. So when you look at Apex, uh, Apex itself already has this Redwood look, meaning it has like this uh, more earthy tone, uh, this uh, Redwood color scheme. You can toggle between a light mode and a dark mode. Uh, you can also have this happen automatically based on your Windows or Mac settings. And you can now, with Apex 20.2, build your own applications uh, using uh, Redwood. So when you go to an application like the one that I've just built here, I can go to uh, what we call Theme Roller and change this uh, to Redwood, set this as my current theme. And then when I go to say my report, you'll see that I have this uh, Redwood UI on my application now. We also introduced something that we call uh, Mega Menus. Mega Menus is what you find on a lot of uh, applications these days. When you look at uh, apexorgle.com, for example, you click on these uh, lines here, you have this menu which hovers over your page. That's what's called a Mega Menu, and you can very easily build these now with uh, Apex as well. Now, you've seen me uh, build this report on the uh, REST API. Now, Apex, up until Apex 5.1, a couple of years ago, was primarily focused on data in your org database. We did have rudimentary support for SOAP-based web services and REST-based web services, but uh, it wasn't really, uh, I guess, a first-class citizen, if you will. Uh, but uh, starting with Apex 18.1, we made REST APIs as well as REST-enabled SQL data sources, first class citizens in uh, Apex. So once you define a REST source or a REST enabled SQL data source, they are available to you in all your visits. You can build reports and charts and forms and everything on these remote data sources, just like uh, what you would do on local tables. Now in Apex 20.2, we introduced this REST data source synchronization, which I uh, briefly shown you in the beginning, right? It allows you to actually define a local table automatically based on the REST API and then have that synchronized uh, with that uh, external API on a regular basis. Another new feature that we introduced in Apex uh, 20.2 is called what REST, uh, what's called REST Data Source Connector Plugins. Uh, that is something that is useful if you want to talk to REST APIs that we that we don't, in Apex don't know anything about, right? Like we know uh, OAuths, we know Oracle REST Data Service. We also knew uh, now, uh, I guess, uh, other like Fusion apps and such, right? For those APIs, we built in functionality in Apex that can talk to these APIs. We know how OAuth is doing uh, filtering. We know how OAuth is doing uh, pagination. We also know how Apex uh, how OAuth is expecting. Uh, put and get and delete operations to get back and forth in order to update data to build uh, CRUD-based applications. But we don't know enough about uh, other third-party APIs to have this close integration with Apex, because any API can have like different rules, different syntax, different types of authentication, different way to kind of paginate three result sets. So this is where REST data source connector plugins come in. They allow you to build out your own pure SQL code that uh, sits in between uh, your API and your Apex application and is taking care of all these uh, pagination and, and filtering uh, calls for you. And if you want to try this out, when you go to this uh, GitHub repository that I talked about, you can actually uh, download an example that is showing you how to build these kind of plugins based on the movie database. So this kind of talks a little bit more about uh, how this actually works. 
Now, along with uh, REST data sources, uh, we have different types of authentication, and we call these authentication types web credentials. So we kind of uh, separate your API definition, your REST data source, from the authentication portion, right? Like you want to kind of point to a REST API for kind of defining the data source and defining the columns and all the stuff, but you want to have the authentication piece uh, separate from that. Uh, so if you have uh, OAuth 2 based authentication or OCI authentication, you don't want to store your credentials uh, inside the REST API because if you take an Apex application and deploy it from your dev instance to your production instance, you don't want to have uh, the API keys or the basic auth username password stored in your application. <coughs> me. So you store this uh, information separately and then when you deploy your application, you can uh, supply this information again during deployment. And then some APIs like the movie database that I talked about, or if you're talking to like say Apex Office Print, they expect an API key rather than OAuth 2 or basic authentication so new in uh, Apex 20.2, you can now define an API key to uh, make this uh, call out. All right, I'm not going to go into this whole demo. Let's move right straight to uh, the new cards region type. Uh, cards region are a way for you to build a report that looks like this, right? Rather than having like a row by row by row report, Cards region allow you to uh, define these kind of uh, rectangles, squares, put in images, put in the information that you want to see. And the benefit is that uh, they are, I guess, easier to read, but they're also responsive. If you are building an Apex application, uh, you always build responsive apps that work on tablets and smartphones and desktop screens uh, in a responsive manner. So they kind of rearrange the content uh, to fit a smaller screen. And uh, with these cards regions, you can actually have them float in a stacked way so that you can easily read them on like a smartphone. And we had cards region for some time, but they were always based uh, on uh, classic reports. So you had to use these card templates, which are kind of uh, cryptic. You had to have a very specific secret query. Uh, all the rendering happened on the server and it was pretty hard to customize. Now with 20.2, it's a native region type. You can just plug in a table or a REST API and uh, pick what uh, attributes you want to show. The rendering happens on the client, uh, so it loads much quicker. And you can do things like infinite scrolling, like you've probably seen websites where you kind of keep scrolling to a page and rather than kind of reloading another page, another page, you actually just keep loading more content as you scroll through. So that's possible now as well. And you can very easily display uh, batches and media and graphics and videos inside your Cards regions. All right, uh, password and search. Uh, that's something that's uh, new and came with Apex 19.192. And I do want to briefly show you what that actually is. So going back to my uh, example here. This uh, NYC 3 on Monday report looks nice and all, but it's a little bit hard to filter. So what I could do, go back to the application builder, create a new page. Let's call this a faceted uh, search. And I see if we have one faceted search. I'm going to add the breadcrumb. I'm going to add navigation. And now I'm going to point this faceted search to the local synchronization table that I built for my 301 data. And then I'm going to refresh this. And then facets is kind of like something that you see like on Amazon.com or like e-commerce websites or travel websites where you pick like categories of facets like the year, the department and such, right? So if I want to do something like this, I pick uh, what facets I want to use, like uh, let's say the status, the borough, uh, the agency name, uh, the, let's see, where's my, I don't need this. I'm looking for the complaint type, facility type, flow state, descriptor. Huh. Can't find my complaint type here right now. Oh, there it is. Cool. 
All right, let's create it like this. And now when I run this page, I get a different type of report. And this report actually lets me pick the borough. I only see, want to see what's in Brooklyn. I only want to see what's reported to the Department of Transportation. And I only see, well, I'll see what's open. So as I'm making these choices, you'll see the results over here being reduced. And uh, the data that I actually see is kind of not what I want to see. So I'm actually going to mark all of these columns as hidden. And then what I actually want to see is the agency status, borrow, close date, agency name, street name, uh, incident address. Well, that should do it. Make this plain text. Well, it looks a little bit better. So now I see like 10 or 11 rows here. And as I'm making these changes, you'll see how the numbers here in the middle update, but also the numbers, the counts over here. And you can actually click on those little links and get visualizations. So if I clear this, you'll see like all the different departments. So if I look at the borough, you'll see how the Bronx and Brooklyn have by far the most open requests. If I take out the open, then change, things change a little bit. When I now go to like, I just want to see blocked driveways, things change quite a bit. In Manhattan, of course, not having all those many driveways uh, is at the very end here now. All right, so that's faceted search. And in Apex 20.2, we introduced, uh, well, 20.1, we introduced cascading LOEs which kind of makes sense if you have like regions and countries for example where based on the selection here like the continent the list of countries should be updated we also introduce these little accounts and then in 20.2 we introduced the charts and we also introduced uh, these kind of group check boxes that are uh, useful if you have like a lot of yes no kind of columns so that's fast with search and then I touched on the report printing at the beginning, right? You've seen my export into Excel and into PDF. So with Apex 20.2, we introduced a new native PDF printing engine and a new native Excel export engine. So no more configuration of external engines for basic printing. You can still use BI Publisher. You can still use AOP. You can still use, well, you can now actually use the Oracle Analytics Cloud Service. So you can still use external print services if you have like a need for pixel perfect printing with templates and everything but for most uh, basic pdf exports and, and excel exports uh, we have native functionality now built in that actually supports all your formatting colorizations background colors headers and footers and also supports asian languages like chinese japanese and korean and coming with apex 21.1 we're also adding hebrew and arab and farsi uh, as new font sets as well as a right to left uh, document direction. Uh, you can uh, attach all your documents now to emails. So if you're sending emails from interactive reports, you can attach Excel and PDF and HTML in addition to CSV. And you can also include just the data. So if you don't want to have any formatting, if you just want to have a plain data dump, you can choose to uh, just get the data. All right, automations, uh, that is interesting if you have a need for, I guess, database jobs, uh, if this, then that style uh, actions, right? Like, for example, uh, you can set up a database job that queries a table or queries an external date, uh, REST API on a regular basis, once an hour, once a day, once a month, whatever. And if a certain condition is true, if you kind of get data back, then you can trigger some action. So let's say, uh, you have uh, automation based on, on, on stocks, right? You can call out a REST API, and if your favorite stock or if your favorite Bitcoin, whatever, kind of goes above a certain threshold, then you can trigger an event like, I don't know, selling all your Bitcoin or whatnot. So you can build out these kind of uh, automations now uh, inside uh, of Apex. We made a few changes to the developer experience. If you have uh, had used Apex before, you may have seen how like the region attributes are no longer here on the left. Uh, they are now as a tab here on the right. We also have a new uh, code editor built in. 
So if you have a report uh, based on SQL or PL SQL, let's change this to SQL, and you can actually look at this in a new editor. And uh, we made a few other modifications to uh, the developer experience using this new editor, having a new data file upload dialogues, and having a new embedded code utility that allows you to kind of extract out all the custom SQL and PL SQL and JavaScript code that you may have written in your application. All right, we also improved a few of our items. You have some new item types like this drag and drop file upload, a new checkbox for interactive grids, and uh, then some other miscellaneous changes. Uh, we have uh, uh, lazy loading for our trees. We also have like this uh, multi-part form data REST request uh, support now for Apex API. That is important if you're talking to external REST APIs and you want to send uh, over files. Like uh, let's say you talk to your publisher, you want to send out uh, XML data and a template. This is where you need uh, this multi-part uh, form data uh, format. And then uh, lastly on my 20.2 list, MLE, the multilingual engine. This is uh, a new feature in the Oracle database available starting with database 21C, which allows you to use other languages uh, like uh, JavaScript and in the future Python in place of PL SQL. So if you are uh, more comfortable writing JavaScript, you can now actually write JavaScript inside the database the same way you would uh, write uh, PL SQL. You can make uh, SQL calls and you can have all the operations happening inside the database. And with Apex uh, 20.2, we allow you to make use of that uh, for your page processes and dynamic actions and other places where you used to uh, execute uh, server-side PL SQL code. So it's easier to execute uh, SQL from JavaScript uh, it's directly in the database. Uh, you're eliminating your expensive round trips uh, from the middle tier. Uh, JavaScript data types are automatically mapped to all data types, so that uh, difficulty is kind of taken out for you. Uh, you can have all your code inside uh, the Oracle database. And uh, I guess if you want to use some third-party JavaScript libraries, uh, uh, regular expressions and such, you can uh, install these libraries in the Oracle database and also well and make use of those. I included two links here uh, to two recent blog posts. So if that's a topic that is of interest to you, I'm going to put them into uh, chat. And then you can get to these links. Oops. Yep, there you go. And they talk about this in a lot more detail. So JavaScript inside the database and JavaScript uh, in Apex page processes and uh, inside SQL commands is now possible. All right, uh, that's it for 20.2. Uh, again, there's lots more to look at and, and see demos. Take a look at our Apex office hours that I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, watch some of these videos. Uh, I do want to give you a very brief preview of what's to come. Apex 21.1 is coming out later this year. And those are some of the features we are working on right now for this upcoming release. We're going to have a native uh, map region type. We're going to have support for Hebrew and Arabic and, and Farsi. We're going to have a new uh, universal theme with dark mode. We're going to be able to import application export files that are in a zip file. We're going to add lazy loading for classic reports and interactive reports, which allows you to have your page load much quicker and then load uh, the report data in a second uh, operation. You're going to be able to uh, build out your own data upload capabilities into your own applications. And then we're going to have a number of new uh, item types, native markdown, a modernized date picker, a new color picker, some enhancements to dynamic actions, and uh, more enhancements to a uh, faceted search. All right, uh, before I jump into the questions, I do want to do one more quick uh, demo here. Um, that's basically an Apex uh, 21.1 demo. So let's see, I'm going to go to create page. And again, that's 21.1. You can't do this on apexorg.com just yet. I'm going to call this map. I'm going to put a menu item in here. 
and uh, I loaded this uh, REST data, right? So I'm just gonna point to this New York City REST API or my synchronized table. And then I'm gonna go look at the columns here. That looks good. Then I hit next and I'm gonna have points. And my geometry column is actually two numeric columns and my longit latit longitude is this one. My latitude is this one. I do have a tooltip, which should be my descriptor. And I do want to have faceted search. When I hit create now, I'm actually going to get a map of New York City, hopefully, which shows me all the recent uh, 3 one chords. So just like this, I was able to put all these 3 one chords on a map. And when I go back one more time and add a new facet, and that facet is gonna be on the borough, and it's gonna be distinct values. I'm now gonna be able to very easily turn on and off different boroughs and look at specific data. So this is a very, very brief preview on uh, what's to come in 21.1. And with that, uh, I want to take a quick look at the questions here. So I have the questions here in the Q&A. So first question, I want to use a free tier account. Yeah, I mean, you can, If you, so the question is about the free tier and uh, the free tier includes a number of free services like Compute and, and Apex but they're also paid services, right? So you can certainly uh, uh, sign up for paid services, but then continue using uh, the free tier uh, services uh, side by side. There's a question about uh, uh, create the REST data synchronization feature that I've demonstrated. Can you create a manual table and point uh, to REST data source? Uh, yes and no, so like you've seen like this table, uh, being shown to you. So you need to kind of go with uh, that and be able to kind of map the REST API definitions to the column. So you can make adjustments uh, as you create this table, uh, but uh, you can't just uh, point it to an existing table. One question. Well, I think we're kind of out of time. So I'll go through these questions and I'm going to send my replies to the NYOEG. Maybe they can uh, share my replies uh, with you. Uh, just looking at some of the highlights. Yeah, the question about the PowerPoint. Yes, I've sent my PowerPoint to the NYOEG. They're going to distribute it to everyone who was on the call. Uh, certificate for using our first API. I didn't have to. You can just uh, plug in that. Uh, that URL. All right, yeah, so I'll get uh, back with the other answers uh, to the NYUG. One more question about IE11. Uh, the version that no longer supports IE11 is Apex 21.2. All right, so with that, uh, thank you everyone, and I'll send the link and uh, my answers to NYUG. Thank you so much, Mark. And everyone who submitted a question, um, I can get a copy of your question straight to Mark as well, so he doesn't miss anything. And we'll reach back out to you guys with as much info as we can. Um, I appreciate the partnership as always with NYOUG. I've sent you guys a link to register for more events and webinars like this. Um, you can also catch Mark again, I think in two weeks, and he'll be presenting, um, I believe, Oracle Apex for Beginners. Is that right? Perfect. Beginners yeah. guide. Mm -hmm. It's an early March. I don't know the exact date, but yeah, it's an Apex for Beginners. Perfect. Um, so definitely check out more webinars to come with NYOUG and Viscosity. Thank you all again for attending. You will get a copy of the slides. And today's webinar was recorded. So you'll also get a link to re-watch today's webinar if you want. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark, for your time and expertise. Sure, thank you. Take care.